جزيلا لاساتذتنا الحضور محاضرة اليوم شكرا جزيلا لكل الحضور وللطلب الاحساء ايضا. I'll talk today about my PhD thesis project which I conducted in the University of Iowa in the United States. The title is A System Approach to Identify Factor Influencing Adverse Drug Events in Nursing Homes. So the lecture content today, we will talk, up, we will give introduction about long-term facilities, not just the nursing homes, because maybe this term is kind of new for Iraqi audience. Also, I need to introduce the uh, adverse drug events, type of adverse drug events and their causes. Also, I need to summarize medication management in nursing homes. And I need to also give you some example about minimum data set and nursing home compare website. Finally, we'll review overview about my PhD thesis, methods, results, and conclusions. So before I dig in my PhD thesis, we may not have an idea what's going on in nursing homes. So who, who needs to, uh, to go to nursing homes? Usually the nursing home residents, they need care. They need both uh, uh, care and activities or in health uh, healthcare. So usually they need one or more of these daily activity assistant, such as in eating, in bathing, in dressing, transferring, toileting, or walking. So any person, usually the elderly or the disabled people, they need help or assistance in one or more of these daily activities. That's why they cannot live independent at home so we need to take care of them at those long-term facilities. So these long-term facilities, they have two types of residents. Either long-term residents, they stay there. When they admit it, they stay there until they die. This is the long-term residents. Or, or some temporarily uh, transferring from the hospitals. Because some severe cases, such as after CVA, cerebrovascular accidents, Patients may need time to uh, get their uh, citrine and need time of physical therapy, habitat, uh, they need some exercise to return to normal physical activity. The hospital there is very expensive in the United States. So the patients, uh, uh, those patients transfer to nursing homes for one to three months with physical activity and with the management therapy, then they discharge them to homes. So it's either uh, temporarily or they take care for long term. It depends on the cases. So this may seem mess uh, figure, but it's uh, try to elucidate what's going on in nursing homes. Long term facilities as a broad term. It's either retirement community or senior apartments or adult care. As you can see, a level of care is going from here to here, which is an increased level of care on the right side. So people who live in a retirement community or in adult care or independent living, those, they receive low care, low level of care. While the patient or the resident live in assisted living, they need more care. For example, people living in a retirement community, they usually live in independent, uh, apartments. So what the advantage of those retirement community? They usually serve them as a hotel. They clean their beds, they clean their, clean their hotels and provide them with, like check on them. Also they provide them with social activity. So it's kind of low uh, level of assistance. While assisted home living, it's, they need higher care, medical and custodial care. Those, they usually have, they have kind of, they need care in dressing or bathing, or, the, or also they need care in medical. So they transfer them to assisted living, and assisted living homes, they usually uh, contain uh, nursing staff, but the nursing staff is not 24 hours. It's nursing staff maybe like, it's uh, during the day, not during the weekend, only the working day. So. Assisted living, they have medical assistant as well. Finally, I chose nursing homes, which is the highest level of care. Those nursing homes, they provide 24 7 care, 24 hours, 7 days a week. The, because the residents there, they really uh, dependent, they cannot take care of themselves, and they have so many diseases, and they take so many medications. 
So they need care, medical and custodial care. So they go and live in nursing homes. And I said they are also either long term residents or temporary residents. Temporary residents, hospital transfer them to nursing homes. Nursing homes take care of them for a couple months, then discharge them to the uh, community. So this simple uh, diagram, we usually, uh, if, if this elderly live active, independent, so they live in the community. But if they start need care, so we transfer them to assisted living. After, if, if the assisted living, if this residents need more care, they will transfer them to nursing homes. So it's kind of spectrum. Some, some homes, they have all these spectrums. They, uh, at, at the beginning, they ad ad admitted them to the low care unit. After they need more, they admitted them to assisted home living. After they need more care, they transfer them to nursing homes. And you may ask the question, who pay for those nursing homes? Nothing is free, and most of those nursing homes are private. So they charge 90,000 a year, or one, even 100,000 a year. And say, who will pay for this? Usually, the resident themselves pay for this. But the government say, if you pay, or if you spend all your money, and you get bankrupt, we will start paying for you, okay? So that you need to pay, uh, to spend all your money. After you get bankrupt, you don't have any assets or home, the government, the federal government, start to spend uh, to sponsor your uh, uh, residency. Because residents may live there for two, uh, 20, 30 years, like from age 75 till 100. I, I saw some residents like 100 years, something. So it's really maybe a long journey until they die. So who pay for this? Start with the self-funded and up with federal funding. So let's define nursing homes. Nursing homes are facilities providing both custodial and medical care 24-7. When I say 24-7, it's 24 hours, seven days a week. The nurse usually have three shifts. They usually have three, one in the morning, one from morning to the evening, one from evening to to the next morning. So always there is a, a nurse take care of those residents. I, we call them the residents, but they are really patients. They are really sick people. They, are, they have like 15 uh, medication usually, or they have like 10 diseases, or some, you know the elderly people, they have all this diabetes. Even some of them, they have dementia, which is cognitive disability. So as you can see here, this nurse take care, like it's called custodial, they feed them, they take care of them. This usually like certified nurse assistants. Also they provide them with medical assistance or even physical therapy, try to give, uh, return them to the community. So it's really the nursing homes, it's the highest level of care, it's the highest level of care, while the assisted home level, it's less care. In the U.S., nursing homes take care of more than one and a half million people who cannot be cared at home uh, anymore. So those residents, those people, they cannot live independently. So uh, in the agreement with, with their guardians, they decide to move to nursing homes. So when they, they search for nursing homes in the community, and they, they choose the nursing home they want to go. So they, uh, they get admitted to nursing homes and they, they, uh, they are given an uh, independent room and this room it will be their independent room, all their belongings and always uh, can rec uh, uh, receive those uh, visits from their guardians anytime. So it's really, it's, it's really fancy care. At the same time, it's, 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 uh, it's really not easy for them because they they will lose the, their, uh, their guardian support, but they get what they get, the nurse support, they get social worker support. So this team usually take care of those dependent people. Who work in, at nursing homes? We have several workers at nursing homes. We have permanent workers. Permanent workers, they stay there, they always there such as registered nurse, which is the highest level of nursing, which is a complete usual bachelor degree in nursing, four years or more. Licensed practical nurses or licensed vocational, those are usual couple years school after, uh, after the high school, which is less education and is less responsible, responsibility than the registered nurse. 
We have also nursing aid, we call them certified nurse assistants. Those just people who help to, to address in dressing and bathing and feeding. Those, they don't give medications, but they give them this title. But they are, they are really, they are really work very hard to, because the, the main, the main duty of them is to uh, wake up the, uh, the residents, take them to the uh, lunchroom, take them to the bathroom, all these duties uh, related to uh, nursing aides. Also, they have social workers, as you know, because they feel the, the price. They need social support. So always, there are social workers. Also, activity staff, people related to physical therapy. Employer, they need to, they have physical therapy room in the nursing homes, and they usually, they have this staff who take care of those people who, who need to train their muscles. As I mentioned, we have permanent. Now we have visiting, visiting healthcare providers. They come maybe every week or every month, but they check on the, for example, attending physician. Also, they call them medical director. Those usually uh, visit the homes either weekly or monthly. It depends on the patient, on the residents. They try to uh, check on the uh, residents, try to monitor their medications. Consultant pharmacist, this job is really uh, important here. There is one consultant pharmacist for each nursing home. So this consultant pharmacist visit nursing home only one, once a month. One consultant pharmacist visit the nursing homes once a month to review the charts, review the lab data, review the vital signs, and try, uh, try to give a recommendation to the physician. And physician is required to answer to the consultant pharmacist, such as, Please uh, monitor INR for warfarin. Please monitor, uh, monitor TSH, whatever, for th uh, thyroid function test. So, and if they, if they notice any uh, potential and appropriate medications, they should send recommendation to the medical director, and medical director is required to answer them. Also, we have practitioner nurses. Practitioner nurses, those are highly professional nurses. They have authority to prescribe medications. So, practitioner nurses, their job is similar to attending physician. They have all the authority to diagnose, to write prescription. So, I, I, uh, so a couple of those, so they are really, they usually have master degrees and after bachelor training. So, those are high professional degree of nurse, nurses. Now, we talked about the nursing homes. Now, we, the second part of my thesis is, will be talk about adverse drug events. What's the medication induced harm in the United States? Because we care, as a pharmacist, we care, we care about the medication safety. So in the United States, more than one and a half million people harmed by medication errors annually. Also, more than half million of them, they, have, they experience preventable adverse drug events. When I say preventable, we can prevent those adverse drug events among elderly people. Also, the literature review showed like more than 93,000 dead annually due to adverse drug events. So these are really scary numbers. And also, according to the literature, the adverse drug events incidents among those residents between 1.9 to 10 per 100 residents per month. So let's see the medication safety terminology. Let's define adverse drug events. Adverse, as a pharmacist, we may know this term, but let's define it again. Adverse drug events is any intended medication-induced injuries or harm. So we have medications. This medication causes harm, such as bleeding, hypoglycemia, falls. All these are adverse drug events. We need to have injury. We have to need harm to call it adverse drug events. So adverse drug events uh, may, uh, need monitoring, need intervention, need hospitalization. Something wrong happened to the patients. We need to take care. We need to intervene to manage this uh, adverse drug events. Adverse drug events can be identified. How can we identify it? How can we know this uh, adverse drug events happen or not? Either by abnormal vital signs, sign symptoms, lab data, and combination of all of these. So we need to look carefully to the residents or patients, lab data, vital signs, or the signs symptoms to make sure if there is something happening. As I said, adverse drug events could be preventable, could be non-preventable. If it's pre preventable, we call it medication error. Okay? If it's non-preventable, we call it adverse drug reaction. 
we call the usually side effects. It's usually non-preventable. So my focus in my thesis, I, I focus on medication errors because we can prevent those. While the adverse events, it's less preventable. So we try to focus on the preventable ones. So adverse events I mentioned. Uh, medication error uh, is a preventable event. So let's prevent this. It's a failure in treatment process that leads to harm to the patients. So it's a failure in the process. Adverse reaction is mostly considered non-preventable and it's happened even at the normal dose, such as normal dose of captopril causes dry cough. So it's non-preventable, it happens, the adverse reaction happen even at the normal dose. Uh, I conducted a literature review and I published it in Journal of American Medical Directors about the types of adverse drug events and causes of medication errors. And uh, I, I reviewed this by this figure. We have four types of uh, causes of medication errors. As you know, we have prescribing by physician, which is we call, if it's, if it's wrong, we call it prescribing error. We have dispensing by pharmacist, we call it dispensing errors. Preparation and administrations, we usually by nurses, because in, I'm talking about nursing homes. So if there's something wrong in the administration, who is responsible? The nurses. Two types of nurses, registered nurses or uh, licensed practitioner nurses. Finally, monitoring errors. Monitoring errors in nursing homes is responsibility of, of consultant pharmacist, nurse, and physician. Because if we don't monitor the NR for the warfarin patients, patient taking warfarin, they will end up with bleeding. So it's a responsibility of every healthcare provider. So those medication errors, because we, we call them here uh, harmful medication errors, harmful medication errors, we focus on preventable medication errors, end up with adverse drug events. Medication errors, harmful medication errors, such as warfarin induced bleeding due to high dose of warfarin, because it's medication errors. And we didn't notice the high dose. We didn't check the NR. We end up with the bleeding, which we call it adverse drug events. So I focus here on the medication errors, with harmful medication errors, preventable ones, because non-preventable ones, adverse drug reactions, really non-preventable and it's hard to be prevented. Let's take a look about what's going on in nursing homes. This diagram is really available even in our hospital. It's it's normal process of medication management. We have prescribing by physician. We have dispensing by pharmacist. We have administrations by the uh, nurse or pharmacist. We have the monitoring. As we know, at home, we usually, who is responsible for monitoring? Patient themselves. But at nursing homes, because they are uh, long-term residents, so the nurse, pharmacist, physician, we need to monitor them. And when I say monitoring, we need to monitor the disease, we need to monitor the illnesses, we need to monitor the lab data, we need to monitor the vital signs. So I focus really on the monitoring side because the, the role of consultant pharmacist, as I mentioned earlier, consultant pharmacist who, who is a pharmacist, visits the nursing homes once a month to review the charts and, if, and if detect anything uh, wrong or inappropriate medications, need to Contact who? Contact the prescriber. Who is the prescriber? Either medical director, physician, or practitioner nurse. Practitioner nurse usually even can prescribe medications. Uh, this may look like a really messy one, but I try to simplify this. It's simple. Prescriber. Who is the prescriber? Medical director, physician. Send the prescription either through the phone or the fax to the resident charts or in person. The resident charts uh, usually send to the, to the long-term pharmacy. You may hear about long-term pharmacy. Long-term pharmacy is, uh, uh, is door closed pharmacy. It's not uh, door open pharmacy. Doesn't uh, dispense to, uh, to public. It's a closed door pharmacy. They only work on the, the orders they receive from long-term facilities. They prepare them. They put them in the in the, this unit unit dose. You know the unit dose. They put in the gasket, the gasket with the day, with the month, 
and they print the, all the medication administration record, and they ship it, they deliver it twice a day to the long-term facility. So they have delivery every day, twice, uh, from the long-term pharmacy. So the orders come from the, usually they, they, they use, in the nursing homes, they use the fax. The fax is the main way of communications. They put the chart in the fax machine, and they send it, they have the uh, numbers, uh, the pharmacy numbers, they send the fax to the pharmacy, and the pharmacy receives that, and they ship the medications, and they ship the, the medication uh, records with the, with the medications, okay? So long-term pharmacy, they usually hire the consultant pharmacist. It's the same company. In the same company, they hire the consultant pharmacist, they provide the medications, and they provide dispensing. So they check the medications, they, they deliver the medications, also they provide the consultant pharmacist. As I mentioned earlier, consultant pharmacist visit the nursing homes once a month, review the medication charts, and if they have any error or any concern about any medication, they send, not directly, they usually send any recommendation through the director of nursing, which is the highest level of nursing. It's, it's director of nursing, which is the boss of the uh, nursing homes. So it's the highest level of nursing. So the director of nursing sent those recommendations to the prescriber, and the prescriber is required, is required by law. Look to this one, required by law to respond. <coughs> Does it mean respond positively or negatively? But, but this prescriber must respond, okay, within like timely manner. Okay, because the law say it's required by law. You may ask me why I selected nursing homes rather than assisted home living. Because nursing homes are required by law to hire consultant pharmacists to review their medication. While assisted home living, they don't they are not required by law. So I, I chose or I selected the nursing homes because they are required by law to hire this consultant <coughs> pharmacist. And I said, and then the director of nursing sent back the recommendation to the consultant pharmacist. Let's take a look what type of data available there are the medical charts. This it's it's very a detailed one. This we call we call it minimum data set. These available in the patient charts. These are demographic data, gender, age, race. Also, they have health conditions about the faults. It's nursing homes are required by law to report the fall incidents. They don't. They are not required to report adverse drug events. They are required. Where is Ewa? Ewa the map here. It's in the Midwest. In the middle, of, it's a corn. Uh, it's with filled with corn field, and it's really uh, south of Minnesota. That's why we have. Harsh weather in winter. It's maybe 30 uh, degree, uh, Celsius degrees below uh, uh, below freezing. I conducted my study in eastern side of Iowa because Iowa city here, my uh, city I was living in, and I conducted this uh, this study in eight towns or cities because I I needed to generalize my findings. I didn't want to choose only one. <coughs> so I I went to Cedar Falls. I went to Waterloo. Cedar Rapids and other couple of cities here. So this is my area. I moved here during the winter season and I stayed in the hotels for uh, several days, especially during winter, because the winter it was icy roads and really hazard to drive during, and I needed to spend like 12 hours uh, a day at each home. And they give me like five days at, at each home that's why I try to stay at hotel to collect my data. So, what are contribution of my studies? My study, the, at the first, I conducted a literature review. I published a literature review before I started my work. So, contribution, the literature, the previous study, they focused on the incidence rates of adverse events, on the, on the residence factors, residence factors of affecting adverse events. <laughs> So I say we need we usually use system or model to follow the model. So the model I, I use I, it's it's uh, called 
Systems Engineering Initiative for Patient Safety. I use this model to study organization factor. I was looking to the organization factors. What's going on inside the nursing homes? All the staff, or the environment, organization, influence, what's my outcome variable? My outcome was adverse drug events incidents. So I measure the adverse drug event incidents and I look to the factors in influencing this adverse drug events. So this is simple the, uh, diagram for my thesis. I look for organization level factors such as staff collaboration, frequency of vital signs measurement, number of physician visit to the facility, of nurse workflows. Everyone knows the nurses have uh, 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 workload, but I, I needed to measure it, to give it numbers, not just, it's not qualitative study, it was quantitative study with numbers. So, this is the SIEPS model I use. SIEPS models contains person influencing any of those, either employees or residents. Task, what, what kind of task we have? We have the frequency of lab tests, time pressure and task workflow. Also technology and tools they use. They don't use the, when I visited them 2016, fall 16, spring 17. I, I visited 11 nursing homes. Only, 10 of, uh, only one of them, they have completed electronic health reports. The other ones, they have mainly uh, paper charts. They were in transition. It's not, it's not required by law to have electronic record. That's why nursing homes, they, they, they don't adopt the electronic health records. While the hospitals is kind of required, so all the hospitals switch to electronic health records. So I look for electronic health records, AD intracardial tools, barcodes, barcode scanning, mobility aids, organization level. Did you see the number of nurse per, per residence? This is the organization level. I, I try to measure if this number of nurse per resident influence our outcome or not. Also, the collaboration between nurse, pharmacist, physician. The environment, I needed to measure the distraction in the nursing staff. I need to measure the number of physician visits, the distracting noise, okay? Finally, this work system influence the process and influence the outcome, which is the incidence of adverse drug events in nursing homes. So, what are my study objectives? I started with routine uh, objectives, but I end up with my core objectives. My routine one, I needed to measure the incidence, right, of adverse drug events. I also measured the potential. You will ask me what, what, what is the difference between potential adverse drug events and adverse drug events. Potential ones, they, they didn't cause harm, but the real one, actual one cause harm. For example, the potential one, it's high, high ANR level, above 4.5, while the actual one is the bleeding. Can, can you see? It's potential to do, but that they didn't cause. Also, I, need to, I needed to identify the medication uh, classes for ADEs, evaluate, this is my core, these <coughs> two are my core objectives. Evaluate the, the quantitative relationship between the SIEPS model and the incidence of adverse drug events. Also, I needed to measure the, the relationship between the same factors and the full incidence. This may look also complicated, but it's, it's not that hard. It's, it's quantitative data source. My study was observ observational retrospective. I did both chart extraction I went to the charts, I reviewed the chart, I record the charts for 755 residents at 11 nursing homes. Looking for what? I w I'm really sure to it. I, I was looking for uh, ADEs. I looking for something uh, errors happened there. So I also conducted survey to the staff. I surveyed four staff members. The consultant pharmacist, a electronic one. I used the paper survey to director of nursing, registered nurse, and certified nurse assistants. I, I was looking for those uh, triggers. Uh, active diagnosis, signs, symptoms, abnormal vital signs, emergency medications, and nurse notes. 
you imagine it's uh, that uh, that thick the record, and I, I need to go in through this thick charts 12 months in the, in the past. So it's retrospective. It's for 12 months looking for the, any adverse drug events and recording the information. It took me like 30 minutes to, to review each charts, and you imagine the it's kind of slow process. Uh, medication chart extraction, I reviewed the physician notes, nurse notes, pharmacist recommendations, lab data, vital signs, and nurse notes. Imagine, nurse notes is handwritten. Handwritten nurse notes. And they, they did it in this way. So it's very hard to track if something... Because I, I say blame catch-up. They, they try to hide any uh, adverse drug events. It's not, it's not required by law to, to report it, so they try to hide it. So it's, they try not make it very clear to the inspector. Imagine if I'm, I'm the inspector and I found tons of adverse drug events, I would give them law score. So they try to hide it. And one home, one home, they give me this 10 charts. I say, where's the re rest of the charts? They say, we are, uh, we are anticipating a severe inspection. So we are hiding this. We are not giving to you. I mean, التفتيش جاي علينا. وبالفعل أنا رحت في اليوم صادف اسمه دولة التفتيش. ما ينفع طبعاً. نجيب الخمسة الصبح جاي. جاي من الخمسة الصبح ليش؟ كم كم من يرسل كل صباح دعم؟ من وثاني يوم هم يجوا من نفس الشيء. قلت لها لل شو اسمه أطلع عني قالت أقول بس لا تحكي ولا كلمة. لازم نشغل. So. I was looking for those medications, those medications commonly used, opioid, psychotropic medications, which is antipsychotic, antidepressant, and anxiolytic, hypnotic. They have so many people with depressions. 60% of those people taking antidepressants. So it's really common. And imagine those psychotropic medications with tons of side effects. They have confusion, they have, they cause fall because they, they so it's really, I focus on them. Anti-diabetic, you know, insulin causing hypoglycemia. And they use something called sliding scale insulin. Sliding scale insulin, they measure the blood glucose four times a day, or it depends. And they give them the dose according to the measurement. So it's really fluctuation in blood glucose. And they have hypotension, they have hyperglycemia. Anticoagulants, warfarin is very, very uh, commonly used. Acetamine, digoxin, I didn't see any, maybe. Maybe couples only. Levothyroxine, it's common among uh, elderly. Antihyperthyroidism, blood pressure medications, valeboric acid phenytoin, and lithium. I use tool called ADE trigger tools. This tool is simple. They get uh, CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare means people above 65. Okay? And all those people above 65, most of them. Because who, who, who usually admit in nursing homes? Either elderly, which is majority, or disabled people. Like people they need care. So, or cognitively disabled. Dementia, or depression, or all these psychiatric issues. Trigger, I look for the abnormal vital signs, signs, symptoms, lab data, and antidotes. For psych, uh, maybe toxicology, uh, 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 faculty member, they will uh, recognize those antidotes. It's, it's, it's four key trigger tools, it's list. I, I, I was looking for this list. I included the patient taking one of those for uh, 30 medications, and I was looking for those triggers. So if, if this patient already took vitamin K, that means experience warfarin induced bleeding. If this patient already took logogan, that means this antidiabetic induced hypoglycemia. Naloxone opioid. If I, I, I was looking for one of those, because this one indicates they have those adverse segments. This is not clear, but I, I, I rely on those numbers to make sure uh, my results are valid. So now, uh, my results, eventually my results. <laughs> Characteristic of the 11 nursing homes. It took me one year to recruit 11 nursing homes. They were very concerned about bring outsider person to their homes. They are private settings. They don't allow someone outsider to come to their homes because the five stars one, because the repetitions. So 
My advisor didn't have any connection with them. I asked the consultant pharmacist. I, I asked the con for, for help. And the consultant pharmacist company, which is the Martin Health and the main health pharmacy, two, those two big ones in Iowa, they helped me. They took me with them to the nursing home directors. I explained my result to the director. Imagine, you need to convince in one visit. In, in 10 minutes or five minutes, you don't have so much time. You have five minutes to convince this director to, uh, to uh, engage in your study. And also I went to the meeting of nursing homes directors. It's once a month meeting. They gave me 10 minutes only. They say you have 10 minutes to convince the people to uh, uh, engage in your study. So I went there with my advisor in the morning, it's 8.30. And I prepared the, the, the like, summary of my uh, one page summary. They, they say prepare one page summary. They don't have time to read it. You need to summarize everything in one page. And explain my, and also I try to appease them by saying that your information of your residents are confidential. I will de-identify the data, no identifying, no names, no social security numbers, because these are red flags, you know? These are HIPAA. They have HIPAA, which HIPAA is required by law. If you need to recruit uh, residents, you need to take the consent. But if I convince them because I'm going to de-identify those data without names, without social security number, without date of birth, so they will give me the, their permission. And it took me a whole 2016 to recruit 11 homes. My target was 10, but eventually I ended up with 11, which is good, kind of. So number of charts, I reviewed 755. The age of those residents started, uh, now this is the number of charts, 33, 103. So, Residence uh, number, this is the hypothetical number, this is the real number. CNS time per residence is from one hour to three hours. Imagine this variation between homes. They have low staff, shortage staff, nurse, nursing staff, same thing, from 55 minutes to one and a half hours. So, health deficiency also from zero to, to 10, and the star rating from one to five. Low star rating high star rating. Total residential characteristics. This is the age of the residents from 22 to 102. This is the, like 100 years old or more. And the facility admission, as I say, from a couple days to several years. This is the admission date. <clears throat> reviewed for history, I reviewed 12 months in the past. It depends on the chart availability from a couple days to 12 months in the past. Eventually, those residents are really sick. They have almost 15 medications. They have 15 medications in their charts. And comorbid comorbidities numbers, 10. So morbid mean diseases. This is my one uh, description of ADEs. Half of the ADEs, adverse drug events, related to the fall. Fall caused by what? Caused by the medication they take psychotropic medication, opioid medication, antihypertensive medications. Other ADEs, most common one, opioid. Everyone, uh, like half of them, uh, were taking opioid. And you, you know the opioid causing what? Cause constipation. All of them, they take two, three medication of uh, Lexit. And psychotropic medication induce hallucination, antibiotic induce uh, dif uh, clostridium difficile diarrhea, and all these medications, all these adverse drug events. I end up with 309 adverse drug events in 235 residents. The incidence rate was 6.1 per 100 residents per month, which is within the literature range. We only have 25 of those admitted to hospital or emergency rooms. So this is the overview of the, uh, of the diseases. As you can see, hypertension, the uh, hypertension dementia, like 43% of them, they have dementia. They, re they, they don't know anything. Dementia, they, they even forget their relatives. So depression, like third of them, they have depression. 96% of them, they, are take, they were taking psychotropic, either psychotropic, antidiabetic, and antihypertensive, and each one of those may cause fall. Imagine, 61% of those taking antidepressants, they feel depressed. 
those elderly people. They don't have their relative support. So I also look for potential IDEs. I end up with a huge number, 3,280 numbers of potential IDEs without harm. 50% of residents, they experience potential IDEs. And also those IDEs such as non-harmful fall, hypotension, and bradycardia. Let's, this is my main analysis. My main statistical analysis, I conducted binary logistic regression through GEE, Generalized Estimating Equations, to measure the relationship between the SIEPS model factors, resident factors, organization factors. I'm looking for SIEPS model, organization in person, task, environment, uh, organization, and the, uh, and the uh, technology. I end up with this table. We have we have significant relationship between skilled nursing care. Skilled nursing care means short term, for short term. Also, dementia. People with dementia, they experience more ADEs. People with psychotropic medication, opioid medication, warfare medication, it's, it's logically to have uh, higher incidence of ADEs. Also, I find significant relationship between consultant pharmacists accessibility. What do you mean by accessibility? Some consultant pharmacists they can communicate with the, with the nursing staff, even outside the, the facility. Uh, so, the telephone. They say, I don't know how to do it. So, the telephone. accessibility. Nurse physician collaboration was significant relationship. CNA's skills mean but, uh, higher skills, less ADEs. Number of physician visit, more visit, less ADEs. Nurse do too much work, too much work, more ADEs. Finally, homes with electronic health records, they have more ADEs. At the same mission stuff, they have more technology, extra ADEs. No, because they didn't apply it completely. They have transition, they have some information in the electronic, other in the charts. So, uh, it's, uh, my, uh, my summary, what I did in, the, in, the, in this study, uh, I used CMS AD trigger tools. It's really helpful. I identified three, uh, more than 300 actual ADEs, more than 3,000 potential ones. If you heard about stop, start, those lists used by, by consulted pharmacists, okay? In, in, in my study, it took me like 30 minutes to review each charts. I went back 12 months in the chart. So I recommend ADE trigger tools. In conclusions, I found six significant facility characteristics, facilities related to nursing homes. Those related to five concepts of my six model. Organization, task, environment, person, and technologies. Those significantly associated with ADEs. Our study found incidence rate 6.1 per 100 residents per month, which is within the range. And eventually, SIPS model, really helpful. This is what was the first study investigating use of SIPS model to identify adverse risk event factor influencing adverse risk events in nursing homes. Limitations, as you know, every study ha has limitations. I, I ended up with 11 nursing homes. Some people say it's not enough. But I did what I did because I only have one and a half years to conduct my study. So I end up with 11 nursing homes. But the good things, they, they are varied from one star rating to 10, which is, I can't say it's generalizable because I have low star rating until five star rating. One home hided the information from me. So this home really gave me only three months. This is the 10 charts. Uh, one consultant pharmacist didn't answer my survey. So I end up with not including the survey pharmacists in my regression analysis. I just excluded all the pharmacists survey because this guy left this survey, have the survey empty. Implication of the, what, what my uh, recommendations? I recommend an increase the frequency of vital signs measurement. They usually measure it every month, once a month, vital signs, blood pressure, and uh, pulse rate. I recommend it every week. Sliding scale insulin, they should stop this one because it's really hazardous. An increased behavior, I recommend an increased behavioral therapy to reduce psychotropic medications. More psychotropic medication, more side effects. 
and increase number of staff because more staff available, we can take care of our residents, reduce the adverse events. Uh, I recommend an increase the frequency of INR measurement because warfaring is troublemaker. It's really troublemaker, and they need to measure. The there are once a week, every week, and then send the recommendation to physician. Physician sent back, stop their uh, warfare in a couple of days, start it over. It's really a hustle. One nurse, one director of nursing told me, uh, I asked her, what do you recommend to improve uh, medication safety and reduce adverse events? She said, please ask physician to stop prescribing warfare because it's cheap, it's available, they use it. And eventually, if the, if the uh, physician able to prescribe vitamin K, glucogan, uh, vitamin K for warfarin, glucogan for anti-diabetic beforehand, يعني مثلا يكتب إذا صار عنده bleeding أعطيه vitamin K. But we would save time, so the nurse will not will not take the phone, call the physician, take the order. You know, it's time consuming to do this. Call the physician clinic, take the order. So three, these are my uh, thesis for today. At the end, I want to acknowledge and thank the Higher Committee for Education Development in Iraq, for the scholarship funding. I want to thank the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy, Pharmacy Department, uh, Pharmacy Practice Department. I want to thank my advisor, William Doucet, for his support. Also, I want to thank the special pharmacist Diane Reese and the consultant pharmacist Justin Rush and John Grenard. Those helped me to recruit nursing homes. Eventually, we need to thank uh, the 11 nursing homes and the Eastern AWA. They took part in my study and my thesis committee members. Also, I would like to thank my Iraqi colleagues. Some of them, they are available here. Uh, Dr. Ziyad Jabbar, Dr. Shah Hatta, and Dr. Ali Abdel Hussein, Dr. Muhammad Kamil, Lecturer Ali Latif, and Basma Suhair for their support and they put their trust in us to finish this mission. Thank you so much and uh, I'm ready for any questions. Dr. Sabah, you have a ميدي لا لا ما تكون شو رأسكم بدي تبع نرسين هون ساعات تسعين ألف دولار في السنة النقطة الثانية عندهم طبعا هم إحنا متلاوات إيش قام يسوون كل واحد عنده بيئة يريد يبيع ويطلب بيئة ال الولدة عم بيجوا معنا فلسة إيش قالت الحكومة قالت الخمس سنين الأخيرة شكو شيء بايع شكو شيء مطي كلها تنحسب عليه تروح تجيب من الفلوس وتيجي يلا نبدي ندفع لك فهم إيش قام يسوون إذا تريد تطي فلوسة كلاس وتطي قبل خمس سنين يعني مثلا هم عمره خمسة وسبعين هو عنده نية عمره ثمانين يلا يروح للنيرسين هونز لازم انت قبل الخمسة وسبعين هو موزع فلوسة كلهم عالي الفلاسة بحيث من يدخل للنيرسين هونز ما يدفع على فلس يعني هم عدوا في حاجة لا ما تدفع انا اقول لك دكتور اكو 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 شورت شورت ادميشن الشورت ادميشن هي هي النيرسين هونز ليش مسويها طبعا اكثر شغلهم على الشورت ادميشن Some patients they need more care. Now, ما عندهم مثلنا واحد ينام بالمستشفى شهر. ما عندهم مثلنا شهر. لأن المستشفى very costly. They will transfer them to nursing homes one to three months, maximum three months. طبعاً 100 days. Medicare will not pay more than 100 days a year. فعندهم limit. You cannot stay in hospital. You can't stay in nursing homes. They will take care in nursing homes. Then discharge the home. هذا السؤال الشورت طبعا هذا هو الشورت ستي الفايتال سينس مالت اربع مرات تنقاس بيوم يعني هو هذا كلش انتنسيف بينما الريزيدنت الاعتيادي بالشهر مره قيسوا للفايتال سينس هو حسب انا زرتهم كلهم زرت واحد عنده 33 ريزيدنس الى 120 هو بيت محور عندهم طبعا اكو واحد من عندهم واحد من عندهم فانسي فانسي هاوس هذا ارادوا هم كلهم ديمانشيا فرادوا في الانفايرمنت مال هذا الاخر لا بيلدنج عبق مستشفى كئيبه وردهات و لانه عندهم هاي كير هاي سكيل كير 
فتقريبا تختلف من ولايه لولايه يعني انا نزلت قلت لك ايت سيتيز اكروس اي 1 هنا اي 1 يمكن شفتوها اي فهاي اي سيتيز النيرسنج هومز قسم عندهم اتفاجئ من اطول قسم عندهم شي تعبر لو من نيرسنج ستيشن قسم على مود الشارتس الشارتس وين يصير يصير بالنيرسنج ستيشن ومن بعد النيرسنج ستيشن يا نيرس طاب اسالها يا دايركتور اوف نيرسنج الطب اسولف وياها لانه اريد اخذ معلومات من عندهم طبعا هم فد بيزي وما يتفاهمون لانه يعني هو تدري الكبار بالعمر مثل الاطفال هذا يصيح اي نيد هيلب هذا يصيح بيس هيلب ف 24 ساعه في اليوم يعني ريلي really يعني بيزي ف راحتي كنت مالي ما تجي اي انا انا رحت سيدر فولس ووتر لو سيدر رابيد اي واي سيتي وكنا انا في التبل تبل كانتس يعني. شكرا خوش اسالك سؤال ثاني آه. نعم. بالنسبه الى الفورمات تبل نعم هو أه الحكايه معروف انه ماكو دراي ما فيها طبعا هو شنو قصدك يعني بيرفنتبل ميديكيشن ايرا يعني لا تعطي هذا كلامي هو مو ميديكيشن ايرا انا يعرف انه الاتروبين يسوي ريتنشن هذا ادفيرس ريكريشن هو هذا هذا نون بريفنت نون فهذا مو كلش فرق يعني انا اريد امنع البريفنت انا اريد امنع انا اريد امنع المونيتورنج ايرار هم عندهم ديفيشنسي بالمونيتورنج المونيتورنج يعني المونيتورنج تدري شنو؟ كل شيء على حساب الهوم نفسه، انت تصور الفايتال ساينس ما يسوى فريكونتي ليش؟ لانه على حساب الهوم، هذول ياخذون فلوس مقطوعه من الحكومه، فايش قد تصرف انت؟ تصرف من حسابك، فايش يسوون؟ يقللوا فيقول يقولوا له للصيدليه انت مو تجي وتكتب لنا فايتال ساينس ولاب ديتا، ترى هاي كلها كوستي، فيقولوا له حاول تقللها، فتشوفه انه انت يعني انا اقول لهم زي يقول لاب ديتا، ترى هاي فلوس، هاي اي نار هاي فلوس، فهم الفكره انه المونيتورنج مالهم مو كلش بالفوكاس، كلها شغلة بزنس، مو مختصر فيها. المعدل الأعمار. معدل الأعمار فوق ال 85 81 81 معدل بعدهم شباب، هناك مثل وحدة كانت قاعدة تمشي عمرها يمكن 90 سنة، وهذا يمشي وياها السي إن إي. يقولها يقول يقول بعد الشباب من الكيلو طلع. طلع ما عندهم مال يسمع. 90 كان عمرها شعرها كلها أبيض. يقول الريلاتيف يجون. الريلاتيف يجون بالويكند. عايفيهم. بس معي إنه عايفيهم. قسم عندهم يجيهم صندي هم غالبا عندهم الفرايدي نايت يجيبون فرقه موسيقيه يلعبون بينجو يجيبون هابي اور ينطون شوي يشربون هذا والاحد عندهم صلاه الصلاه هاي ما ما تتطور فجايبين القس وجايين صندي فاير وماشي فهم موفرين والافلام كلها مال الستينات هاي مال كابوي شايفين؟ ما يتوافقوا يا اعمار ويتوافقوا اعمار الافلام كلها مال الستينات دكتور هاي تجي تروح هناك نفس الافلام هاي مال كابوي شايف هاي مال الستينات مالتهم لان هم كانوا هم ذول الجيل الثلاثينات امورهم يتناسبوا ويا شبابهم ويا شبابهم فكلها تلقاها تفوت كروز اي فتشوف تشوف الصور مالتهم على الباب وي كان دو ات هاي مال حرب العالميه الثانيه هاي اللي مسوي هيك شيء كاتبه وي كان دو ات يعني تمس التحدي الامريكي فكل هاللوكنز مالتهم حق العالميه الثانيه، بعد كانوا شباب يعني ذاك. اي فالاجواء مو فيها فالاجواء شو اسمه بس يعني حقيقه يعني انا ما عندي خبره بالنرسنج هومز فصار يعني اول مره اشوف هم اصلا القسم مالتنا ما مشتغلين قبل على النرسنج هومز فبحيث ما اريد ادرس الادفايزر مالي قلت ترى ما اعرف انت شوف لك فصدق واحده من المؤتمرات ليش اقول لك المؤتمرات مهمه؟ واحده من المؤتمرات كان اشوف واحد هو طاري الرئيس هو هذا الدايركتر مال وحده من اللونج تيرم فارماسي راح شوية واخذ كونتاكت انفورميشن مالته كان يطلع هو هذا اكثر واحد ساعدني بتصور قام يشيل تليفون على جماعته اروح وياهم اسوق لي ساعتين على مود اقابل المدير مال نيرسون هومز احكي له اقنعه يقبل وجد دفعنا لهم دفعنا لهم كل واحد 250 دولار هي ترى مو مبلغ تافه القسم مالتي دفع حق بس هو تعبير رمزي عن الشكر بعدين بالاخير دفعنا لك واحد 250 دولار كل نيرسون هومز بس منو اللي ساعدني؟ الصيادله، هنا هم يسوون شغل، الصيادله يساعدون الصيادله. فالكونسلتنت فارماسيست هم ساعدوني ولا هم بدونهم؟ انا من يعرفني؟ من يطبطني وجاي من العراق و... وش اسمه؟ ويطب على نيرسنج هومز. فهاي يعني العلاقات تفيد، يعني انت اذا تشوف لك واحد مؤتمر مهم، اخذ الكونتاكت انفورميشن مالته، انت ما تحتاجه، ما تعرف شو تحتاجه. احتاجيتهم كلهم، العفو كان السؤال هنا. تفضل دكتور. So I, I, I ask you uh, about this. I mean, do you think this is uh, oriented into more complicated systems for the medical system, or this is uh, yeah, some specialities? Yeah, your work or these yeah, systems and the nursing they get on extra. Yeah, for example, the system or the field. Yeah. يعني في التعقيدات شويه تخابر الطبيب خليه يقلل انت وكذا زين زين دكتور عفوا هسه احنا خلينا نكون واقعيين 
احنا مو كل مو كل الحوائل ممكن ممكن تعتني بهال الاطباق ممكن انت تعتني فيه مو بس كاستوديا مو بس تودي للحمام وتجيب الاكل انت اذا يحتاج عنايه يحتاج دواء يحتاج رد كلوكوز مشى من اربع مرات وانت ما متوفرين منه هم حياتهم صعبة يعني هو ليش يعيش الا اربع مرات؟ هو ستيبل طلعوه من المستشفى هذا ستيبل يعني دكتور ماكو واحد يطلعوه من المستشفى ستيبل، هم ليش يطلعوه؟ يطلعوه عنده ما يصرفون فلوس في المستشفى، الليلة مال المستشفى 200 دولار بس مال السرير هم يطلعوه بعدهم هو الستيبل كان ودوا لي هو مو ستيبل، بعدهم مو ستيبل يحولوا من ولو ستيبل ما يحولوا من نيرسنج هومز بس نيرسنج هومز بيها نيرسز وبيها فيزيشن وبيها كونسلتن فارماسيست طبعا مره بالشهر يعني ليش اودوا للمستشفى؟ اصل النيرسينج هوم لا دكتور مو هذا مثلا هو صار في سي في شويه ستابلايزيشن بالضبط سي في اي صار عنده جلطه وين يودوه؟ يودوه للامرجنسي سي سي يو تيك كير اوف يعني 9 دايز وات ايفر ديسشارج ما يريدون يدزوه لهم لانه هذا هذا فيزيكال ثيرابي هذا علاج فوين يودوه؟ يودوه للنيرسينج هوم فهذا فشي وسط النيرسينج هوم اللي انكسرت رجله هم انا شو اسمه لانه يعني هذا يحتاج لك فد اسبوعين هو ما يقدر يخدم نفسه رجله كلها مجبسه مثلا فما ما يدزون للبيت وهاي حقيقه النيرسنج هومز انا شفت لك كلش كيل والسيرفين يعني حقيقه آه يعني لخدمه لخدمه الالدرلي للسينيور بيبول يعني احنا تبدا تقلل اللود على المستشفيات تقلل اللود على المستشفى وحتى تطول طبعا تطول اعمارهم لانه لانه انت خدمه خمس نجوم من ناحيه الصحه منو بالبيت اهله يمنع احنا هالقد نبالغ صحيا؟ فيعني عشت لك دكتور فرص سؤال بس هو السيستم مالهم اللي تدري هم اندبندنس وكل واحد ابن بولايه ف دكتور علي بس نعم دكتور علي مو لا اكو بعد سؤال هني؟ اه تفضلي اشلون مشيها علينا والله انا النتائج انه احنا احنا لازم نركز انه مستشفياتنا ممكن مو احنا لازم هو هذا السؤال احنا لازم لازم وي نيد تو ايدنتيفاي ذا مين ريزن اوف ذا ايرا احنا لازم لازم نبحث عن الريزن اوف ذا ايرا واحنا احنا مستشفياتنا احنا مو المشكله اني يعني علي عزيز غلط لازم اعاقب علي عزيز هذا سؤال بلاي كلتشر المفروض احنا نشوف وين دي سبب خطا السيستم كله يعني احنا نحتاج مثلا بو كان ما الطبيب يكتب الخط ماله ما واضح ويصير بريسكرايبنج ايرور المفروض اكو الكترونيك ريكورد الكترونيك سيستم بعد ما حد كله بالحاسبه وتجيك الوصفه مطبوعه انت قاعد بالصيدليه بالمستشفى وتجيك الوصفه من الطبيب مطبوعه واضحه ما تقبل الغلط مو تجيك انت ما واضحه والكتابه ما واضحه هذا هذا نعم اخو ايرور اي وحده من عندهم انا وحده من الريكومديشن مالتي احنا احنا على طول نحتاج نزيد الستاف شورتج من الستاف هم يسوي ايرار احنا راد ننظر انا الغرض من بحث مالتي سيستماتيك واي انا نظرت على السيستم نظرت على الامبلويز على اللود اللي عليهم على البريشر الورك مالتهم على الكترونيك هيلث ريكوردز احنا السيستم راد شويه نحركه يعني مو بس الصيدلي السريري الصيدلي السريري شو يقدر يسوي اذا ما عنده حاسبه بها بها الهيستوري مال المريض وبيا كل معلومات المريض، شلون تقدرين تسوي ريفيو اذا عندك نقص بالطبله؟ ما عندك اي ان ار بالطبله، شلون تقدرين تقررين؟ لازم عندنا الكترونيك هيرت ريكوردز، لازم احنا نسوي سيستماتيك واي، احنا يعني نطمح لها، واحتمال هي مو واقعيه بس احنا كصيدله اه مسؤوليتنا ميديكيشن سيفتي، باكر عقبه حيصير بليدنج من الوارفرين راح يلوموك الك. هو احنا حقيقه احنا على وا وزاراتنا تستفاد من على وا احنا وزاراتنا تستفاد من من الريكومنديشنز يراد يراد شوي وزاراتنا تشوف البحوث اللي نسويها البحوث بالكليه هنا انا بحوث ممتازه وبحوث يعني كما فروع اللي تشتغل بحوث ممتازه بس عندنا لاك عندنا عندنا لاك بالريليشن شيب بين الادمنستريشنز والريسيرش والله انا خوش ملاحظه يعني انا من موقعي يعني شفت هناك يمكن كل حضراتكم اللي مسافرين وشايفين كونفرنسات برا اكو بيها اغلب سشنات هي سشنات علميه يعني احنا هنا يجي المؤتمر يطب المؤتمر منا يبقوا له محاضرتين كلمتين خلص المؤتمر احنا لازم نركز على هو هو اسمه مؤتمر علمي 
احنا نريد نتائج، هناك برا مثلا جابوا لهم قاعه بقد بقد هاي الفسحه مالتنا، كلها منا للعماده، وخلوا بها 300 واحد انه بوستر سيشن، كل صيدلي او كل باحث يوقف على البوستر مالته، بوستر مطبوع مثل على القطعه مالتي برا، بها ملخص البحث مالتي، كل صيدلي يوقف على البوستر سيشن مالته، ويجون الناس من 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 كل من كل الباحثين وغيرهم يفترون على الصيادله ويسالوهم على بحوثهم او على الباحثين، فاحنا على وين نقدر ندخل بوستر سيشن بمؤتمراتنا، يعني هذا يعني هيك مقترح من عندي، اذا نقدر ندخل بوستر سيشن، نطبع بوستر سيشن، لانه انت ايش قد تريدين تعطين كل واحد محاضر ايش قد طول 10 دقائق وانت عندك ساعتين، كل المشاركين ما يطلعون 10 15، من عدد تاخير ما راح نسمع البحوث هواي. بس انا خلي ادعو كل الباحثين واخلي قاعه وحده بساعتين 300 واحد انا 300 بحث عارف تشوفين؟ فاذا نقدر نسوي بوستر سيشن ان شاء الله مؤتمر الكليه او بحوثنا القادمه خلينا نفتح بوستر سيشن نقول له للباحث روح اطبع بوستر لخص احنا علمونا من 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 صف اول عن ثلاث سنوات ونص اخذت كورس وورد كل البحوث كل كورس اخذه يقولوا لي سوي بنهايته بوستر عليه وسوي برزنتيشن هم هم مو بس تسوي بحث تسوي بحث تكتبه وتلخصه وتقدمه يعني انت باحث انت صيدلي مو بس باحث يعني احنا نريد اوقف اني او الخص لك البحث مالتي يعني هذا لقيته ثلاث دقائق طبعا بوحده المنافسه عندنا هنا الفكره اعطيك 10 دقائق او خمس دقائق تلخصين بحثك فعلى وا انه خوش ملاحظه على وا احنا نقدر نسمع للباحثين نسمع البحوث يعني احنا يطب المؤتمر ويطلع ما سامعنا خمس باحثين نلتقي بالغداء ونلتقي بال بال ما اعرف شنو بالهدى وبال شو اسمه وينتهي 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 المؤتمر كيف كثرت ايوه يعني واي نوت ما يخالف ما يخالف بس احنا اذا نقدر نحترم خذ سؤالين شكرا جزيلا اذا عندكم سؤال اخر عن اساتذتنا طلابنا شكرا جزيلا لاستماعكم لنا شكرا لك دكتور الله يسلمكم شكرا